All right. Today, we're going to be talking to Amy, who's one of our more recent success stories in the Facebook group. And she's got a really interesting one because she's not only gotten her ex back, but she's got engaged to her ex. And man, you've got you've got a lot here. Yeah. <laughs> Your ex is a fearful avoidant. He's a doctor. Um, he got really stressed based on COVID. Uh, and he even knows that you use this program to get him back, which is a huge, it's pretty rare for a lot of people that I talk to when they're success stories, they used to like, they're embarrassed about it, but you seem like you've been completely honest and open with him about it, which is great. I think. Yeah, I was. Um, and he was actually proud of me for taking the initiative to, um, to get him back. He thought that was amazing. I think it's I think it's kind of cool that he looks at it that way because there's really two ways to look at it, which is you use the program to get me back. Oh, that's so cool that you cared enough to use something like that to get me back. And then there's the like your week for using a program. And usually I think most women and men who get their exes back are just scared to tell their exes that they had to get help. But anyways, let's go back and talk. I was scared oh, in were? the beginning. I was, but then um, he he just made me feel comfortable, so I blurted it out after a glass of wine, unfortunately. <laughs> and but he was so receptive and very um, wanted to know more about it. Actually, oh, so, that's great. Yeah. That's great. So you probably let him into the Facebook group, and he could see how how I did everything's not. on. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> that's too much for him. To that's see. too much. Uh, okay, so why don't we go back in time and why don't you? just sort of like introduce us to how this breakup came about and uh, your journey. And then we'll kind of ask questions to figure out what you did right. Okay. Um, so he and I uh, were just at a year and we were making plans to move in together and um, COVID happened. And actually COVID happened about three months after we started dating. So it was really difficult dating. All of our dates were at parks um, picnics, that kind of thing, but a lot couldn't of one-on-one -on -one time. Eat, couldn't Correct. see a couldn't, movie, do things like right. that. Um, but I think that it actually brought us closer quicker because of all the talking. But anyway, um, we had, uh, we were just at a year. We were planning on moving in together. And the week before we were moving in, he canceled that out of the blue. And then about two weeks after that, he um, broke up with me out of the blue. I mean, there was no indication to me that there was a problem. I was just dumped. And did he I'm not, do it? Or, sorry, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Did he do it like over text or did he do Oh my God. Person? Yes. He okay. tried, I'm, but I'm not okay with that. He tried to do it over text and I texted him back that that was not acceptable. So he called me um, and we talked about it. And um, we actually, the first time he dumped me, we got back together for two weeks. And then he okay. did it again. So it was twice. So how, did, so, so how did you get him back? Bef before we get into the permanent one where you mm -hmm. got engaged, how quickly did you get him back that first time before the second breakup occurred? It was weird because once I got him on the phone and we talked things through, he, I mean, it was immediate. We were back together. Okay. It, so it's it was like just if, a conversation. Correct. It was just a conversation. Um, I never begged. I never natted. Um, none of that. Um, but then he did it again via text. And that, I'm sorry, that was enough for me. And I texted him back that um, I agreed with him. I needed the space, the time to. And that was the end. I never texted him again. <laughs> now, when you say you agree with him, did you just say it like that? Like, I agree I with you? I did. I said, wow. I agree with you. I, I need this too. And that was the end. He actually texted how, me after that, but I didn't respond. Okay. So how did he exactly initiate this breakup the second time? He, he said, I love you, but I'm not in love with you, okay. but I love you. I mean, he kept repeating himself. I love you, but I'm not in love with you, but I love you. It's such and a right paradox. Now, it, like, was, can, it was crazy. <laughs> And okay. right now, right now, I can't be with you right now. It was just like that. I was like, I love you. I love you, but I'm not in love with you. I love you. I can't be with you right now. Okay. And I was, so, you know, I was done. <laughs> what was your first reaction upon sort of saying like, okay, I agree with you? 
What did you do after that? Angry because he did it by text again. Um, <laughs> so I have too much pride, I guess, to be okay with that. And so um, that was just, yeah, that I was done. And I just agreed with him and that was it. Um, so do you think you saying, I agree with you came from a more of a prideful stance or an anger stance? Like, okay, I agree with you. We're done. Yes. Was it, was it, it, so, okay. I like definitely. it actually. Yes, <laughs> yes definitely. Um, I was not going to be treated that way. And I felt I had more value than that. And I had tried to let him understand that the first time he broke up through text, but he didn't seem to catch on. But I, the fearful avoidant part of him, I know that's why he texted. Now I know this. Um, he was too afraid to do it over the phone. He was too afraid to do it in person. So, um, but the at the time, I didn't know that. Scary. Oh, for, yeah. For He's not good with that. Okay. So you're immediately after this breakup, you're angry, hurt. At what point does that shift? So, uh, just to clarify, when you say, I agree with you, are you at any point thinking I need to immediately get this person back? Or is it like, screw them, I don't care about them? Whoa. Um, I think when I texted him that, it was screw you, I don't care. Okay, yes. so how long <laughs> did it take take for the for the dial to shift more to like, okay, I The need next to day. Make... Okay. <laughs> So it was a quick, day. the it anger was. of the five, you know, the five stages of grief was very quick for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you know why though? Because we had such a perfect relationship. We had never argued. We still haven't. No arguments, no disagreements, no, you know, a, just a beautiful relationship. So yeah, I wanted it back. And he's the first guy I've been with since my husband passed. And um, so I think that bond with him, I, I just, you had a strong connection. We really felt, did have a strong connection. You felt yeah. there was something special to this. Sure. Um, it seems like the only points of contention you guys ever had was related to this. All of a sudden he comes out and says, we can't move in together and then breaks up with you quickly afterwards. And as we're gonna, probably going to find out the probably that step of moving in together maybe freaked him out. Do you think? I think it did. I think it was the uh, tip of the iceberg. Honestly, it, it was just what put him over. Okay. He couldn't handle the relationship. He couldn't handle the financials, the, the COVID, everything that was right. happening, his kids, everything that was happening at that time, the holidays, <laughs> everything. Yeah. I mean, well, we were talking before we started recording about some of the factors that caused the breakup and there's a lot there, you know, like you had mentioned that you're a widow and he's a widow and then mm -hmm his kids did not want to meet you. So that weighs on him. Then there's the COVID aspect of happening right when you start dating. So, you know, it's kind of like this weird situation for him, especially at work because people don't want to show up to work uh, or show right. up to, because they're afraid. And that, you know, creates some sort of financial stresses within him as well as work stresses within him. So maybe to compartmentalize, he's like, I need to put this relationship over here and just focus on these aspects. Of course, it, it usually blows up in people's faces who do that because you can't just like pretend something doesn't exist. Right. Um, I think that's what he did, though. He, he yeah, tried I, to pretend. It's almost like a coping mechanism. And I think like it's, it's really relatable. Uh, I'm sure there's areas in all of our lives that we've done the compartmentalization aspect, you know, without really thinking about it. We just kind of do it as a way to cope. Probably. I agree. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was Sorry. a lot. And I think it just was the tip of the iceberg for him, the moving in and um, he couldn't handle it all. And I was the disposable thing, if you will. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think you were probably the easiest thing to mm -hmm. like, okay. He thought. Yeah, he thought. Yeah. It turns out you'll outlast COVID, you'll outlast the stress, you'll outlast yes. all of the financial constraints. Okay, so eventually you get to this point where you're like, okay, I need to think about trying to repair this. Mm -hmm. At what point do you come across our program or our website or our YouTube channel? Uh, what point of the stage does that occur? I actually found it that the night of the breakup and I signed okay. up the next day. It was that quick. 
So um, do, you, do you remember exactly like if you were doing like a Google search or you did like a YouTube search? It was a Google search that led me to the YouTube okay. um, videos. <laughs> and I started on the videos, yes, immediately. Um, it just seemed like such a solid program. I, of course, I was reading the reviews and um, I did, I'm a researcher, so I did a lot of research. And out of several, I picked this one. And actually the reason being, yeah, <laughs> the reason <laughs> being was to, yes, I wanted him back, but I also wanted to find out why was it so easy for him to do what he did and via text. And, you know, I wanted to improve myself. I didn't want it to happen ever again, whether I got him back or not. Okay. So our program definitely fits that mold. Uh, you eventually sign up for the program. I'm assuming you start reading about the no contact rule. You get started on that. Um, and you mentioned that was immediate, <laughs> immediate, so you, no contact. So, I mean, you did that inherently without really maybe even Correct. learning about it until afterwards. Right. You mentioned though, that you never broke the no contact, not one time. I did not. What um, is your secret? How, how, how can people get this magical power? <laughs> I don't think it's a magical power. It's really a will. It's what do you want to accomplish? And, and it's a goal. And if you want to accomplish a goal, you've got to do the steps to get to that goal. And I actually made a paper of uh, 45 hearts on it. Nice. And I put it on the fridge. And every morning I colored in a heart. And it kept me, you know, I could see the end. I could see you know, every day it was a, a, ch a colored in a heart and it gave me a, you know, and I was reading through everything. I, I purchased the bundles. I did everything. So, um, but yeah, I think it was just that when you get a goal, the problem I see a lot in the program um, by reading through uh, other people's things is that the focus is more on getting him back. And that should really just be an outcome. The focus I thought was on me and on improving myself. So I wasn't in this situation again. Um, and if I got him back, that's great. If I didn't, you know what? There's someone else out there. Yeah. And it's like music to my ears. Uh, uh <laughs> Like every single day, uh, my YouTube sort of studio makeshift, we have like a room in our house that's just like for YouTube. I go up there and I always feel like I'm repeating the same stuff every single day, just like in different ways. And it's always mm -hmm. what you just said, which is like, and I think that's such a, such a really great way of putting it. The outcome of improving yourself and focusing on you outgrowing your ex should be that they want to come back. Yes. Um, oh, instead yes. Instead of focusing on it, like, well, if I do this, they'll come back. Um, and right. it almost never works out that way. And it's usually the people I'm noticing when I interview the people, the people who have that, who, who realize that, that concept of like, hey, this is, this is like the outcome of all this work that end up doing really, really well. They don't always get their exes back, but right, a lot of but them the, end up do. It should be okay if they don't, right? They um, don't care if they get their exes back. It's kind right. of like... I, well, I cared, I, but <laughs> I, I, I think you you can care, but also like accept. I was okay, come, right? You you yeah. know it's not going to be like this devastating thing that's going to ruin your right. life forever. Which I and I won't tell you that I was, you know, even keeled emotionally this whole the whole time because I grew a lot emotionally through the program a lot. Um, I yes, I had plenty of days where I was crying and and wanted to reach out, but my willpower. Um, was stronger than that in, in because I wanted to achieve something. And I knew that if I did that, well, number one, why did I buy the program? And number two, I wasn't going to achieve what I wanted to achieve, which was growing and changing and never, ever again being any man's doormat ever, ever, ever. What well, I also, I'm kind of curious to so you, you mentioned you classify your ex as a fearful avoidant. Did you know about attachment styles at all before you came into the program? I did not. Um, one of the recommended books by Tyler was attached, which I did read. And I did the test that's in there for both me and my fiance. And um, I mean, he was, he was textbook fearful avoidant. It was easy to see, yeah. but that changed. It changed everything in my perspective and how I approached him. Um, it still does. It still yeah. does. 
So it's it's really mind blowing, isn't it? Like it is. You, it's awesome when, when you actually just kind of understand this is how they're interpreting relationships and how it's maybe different. Uh, I'm curious, how did you score on the on the test? I am anxious. Okay. That's, um, that's pretty common. <laughs> yeah, I'm anxious. Um, but I will tell you that I've been working on changing that attachment style and I've made leaps and bounds in doing that. I have um, really done well with um, handling my emotions. Uh, Calming the Emotional Storm is a great book. <laughs> handling yeah. my emotions and uh, learning how to uh, identify triggers, that kind of thing. Um, so I've come a long way. Yeah. So 45 days, no contact is mm -hmm. not a short amount of time. Mm -mm. Um, here, here's my question for you. I know it was not all roses and candy every single day and like perfect. I know there were days where it was really hard and, and you're probably going to the Facebook group and you're saying like, I, I want to break no contact so bad. But after all the work was done, when you got out of no contact did you feel like you had more confidence did you feel a little bit better about things a hundred percent a hundred percent i was very confident i'm not going to tell you i wasn't nervous about the first reach out and would he respond or not because i had no idea yeah. but i was equipped and ready for it if he didn't i knew what to do i knew how to handle it thanks to the program. I mean, everything's written out. If you know, if you really do the program, everything's right there for you. So I knew how to handle it. I was equipped. And um, thankfully, I didn't have to deal with any of that. But if I had to, I, I probably would not have stuck around very long trying um, to maybe two reach outs with no response. And that's just me. I'm done. Next, I'm going to, am I going to move on? You know, but um, well, fortunately, that didn't happen. I'm glad it didn't happen. I'm very glad it didn't because it, actually the relationship is better now than it was the first time. That's so it's, great to hear. It is. And I will tell you that it's the change in me. I have no doubt that a lot of it is the change in me and how he's responding to me that has made a difference. Yeah, I, I like I told you before we started recording, I had gone through some of your Facebook posts and it was really interesting. You, there was a Facebook post in there that you were like mentioning, like this is before you were engaged. I think you were like really close to getting him back, but not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. And you had mentioned like something had happened where you could tell he pulled away, which is oh, really yeah. classic fearful avoidant sort of mentality. Like when, when things are getting close, they kind of pull away because their independence is kind of like, eh. and you had mentioned that before you would have just kept pursuing and trying to fix the the thing. Right. But mm -hmm. you decided just to give him his space and he comes back like the very next morning and with like, I love you. So it seems yeah. like just even being aware of how to handle someone who has avoidant tendencies and having the discipline not to give into your anxious tendencies. Uh, that's huge. It made a huge difference. That was the texting phase. And he was so responsive during the texting phase. Uh, the first couple were actually neutral. One one conversation he even. I saw you reach out, by the way. It yeah. was like uh, you asked for his opinion on something. And he, um, he was like, he's really like clever in his response back to you. <laughs> yeah, he just and then he just disappeared. And I was like, OK, so but I mirrored him. Um, I didn't, you know, I'm not going to, if that response warranted no response from me when he bowed out. So um, I didn't. And yes, he did pull back. I mean, it was obvious he had pulled back and he came back and I mirror, I mean, I followed this program. I mirrored him. I did the, I have a spreadsheet where I kept the times. Oh, you did. Right, so I was right. time and a half in. Yeah. I mean, I was doing it all, but it worked. So what can I say? It, it, um, if you want me to go ahead, I can go ahead a little bit. Um, the, the texting phase, um, about five and a half weeks, I believe. Um, the first- so It lasted weeks, for five and a half weeks, the texting did. phase. Mm -hmm, okay. It did. 
and that's when I went with Anna about going and trying to move into the phone call phase because I was totally didn't really know how to do that and she guided me in that and it was just a success he so how, how did you accomplish that um actually I was uh we're both in well we're both in the medical field so I was actually getting ready to be promoted and um I had a question about my promotion um he had been with me on that journey since day one so i brought it back and was like i need help on this um you know my resume and this thing that i had to do for this promotion and he was like i, I was like i really need i, I want to email this to you and then i'd like to go over it on the phone because oh it's brilliant oh yeah, it's it, so it, it brilliant. <laughs> he was oh, like oh man even time. i'm <laughs> so it, it, the reason i think it's it's brilliant is because it really kind of taps into that Holy Trinity concept, the wealth aspect of it, mm -hmm. but also like, it's such a brilliant way to get, uh, she actually recommended that to one of my other success story interviews. Um, it, it was someone who lived like in Japan and it was like a work thing that she needed help on. And she, mm -hmm. she actually got like a meetup that way. She was like, come meet up with me. It was, I think it was pre COVID. So it was back when you didn't have to worry about going out, but right. Yeah. It was oh, great. Man. It just it worked like great. a charm. I mean, what a cool way of showing off too. Like, yeah, I got this promotion, but I need, I need your help on. It's just, yeah. It and works. we scheduled a phone call and he actually backed out of the first time it was scheduled. He was like tired. He's scared. He and I, and I was scared. like, Oh no, I was like, no problem. When, you know, is there another time you could do it? And he, he's like, well, why don't we do it? It was like the next day, I think actually, or two days. And he, he was there we did the phone call we went over it and everything was great um and that opened the door for the phone calls because then um we started talking on the phone a little more you know i took it slow um so the, the the very first interaction you have which is kind of like business-based interaction mm -hmm. did did you did it eventually evolve on that very first phone call to more personal talk topics it did. You're going to love this. You're going to love okay. this. Yeah. So he's, he really loves like clothes like I do. Okay. And I'm okay. just a big Calvin Klein fan. And so I had, uh, after the phone call about the resume and stuff, I'm like, well, the interview's coming up or whatever. And I'm like, I'm going to Macy's. I need a new suit. And I want to know your opinion on the three that I pick. And so I sent him the three pictures and I mean, that was it. He was like commenting and he's like, you're so beautiful. And it, and it was just, it really opened the flirting and the, um, it changed the dynamics of our communication. Oh, that's so clever. It was. You're, you're <laughs> I did that like, myself. <laughs> yeah, it's just, oh man, it's just so good. It was I mean, good. that's like, it's, it's a great way of uh, using phone calls to enhance text messaging too, mm -hmm. if you think about it, because that was all happening through text, right? That was all text. The pictures. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But then um, we started talking a little more on the phone and it was only once a week or something and they weren't long. We, we've never had long phone calls. We still don't. We talk in person. But um, he had brought up through text. He had brought up a movie he wanted to see. Gosh, what was it? I don't even remember now. But Quiet um, Place 2 or something like that. Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> I think Sweet! it was. Yes. <laughs> that's like the only only I love that movie. That's come out. Yeah, oh, they're great. They're both yeah. great. But I had texted or he had texted that to me and I was like, yeah, I want to see that too. And I'm like, well, how about we just see it together then? Oh. I mean, so I threw that out there. You just keep stumbling into perfection here. Uh, I mean, it's like, great. Did that not work out so well though? It did. We went, we met, okay. we went to the movie and then he said, well, why don't we go grab a bite to eat afterwards? And the golden rule i mean it was that right there at the dinner i want you back let's you know i mean it was that quick so i didn't have to go through any more meetups so um but i mean it was great and it's been great ever since so okay so i want to back up there's a few okay. things that we, we've come with hyperspeed you mentioned after the first phone call you were in that phone call phase for a little bit and you would talk maybe like once a week how would you end up getting into those phone calls, like the, the second phone call or the third phone call. Ooh, what was the second one? Um, I had a COVID question, which I really didn't because I'm in healthcare too, but right. I mean, but I had a COVID question and it was right when all the, the medications for it were coming out. And, um, I can't remember even the names of them, but, um, I told him I wanted to talk to him about COVID 
that was the second phone call. Um, wow, it's hard to even remember, to be honest. Um, so it, just it was all me, though. He naturally. was never him. He didn't initiate. He, okay. he, didn't, he wasn't even initiating texts. So now that you got him back, you told me something interesting before we started recording. Did you ever ask him explicitly why he never initiated? I did. I did. Okay. And his, uh, he told me that because I had texted him that I wanted that too, that I wanted the breakup too, and I agreed with him, he didn't think I wanted him to reach out to me. And so he, being a fearful avoidant, isn't going to risk that. And he wanted to. He told me he regretted the breakup within a week after doing it. Um, but he didn't reach out to me because he didn't think I wanted him to. So that was interesting. That was, that is interesting because I'm just curious if you had not reacted the way you initially reacted to the breakup, which is out of anger and you're definitely, you know, in the right for that. I wonder if it would be different because I've actually seen situations where you get back together too quickly and it just, you're just ends up in that, you know, off again, on again cycle and I'm, I'm wondering, did he make any mention about like, wow, you're different or you seem different? At he all? did. He did. He told me that he, he thought that I was a lot more confident. Yeah, okay. And that that and was attractive to him. What about specifically your handling of his fearful avoidant sort of like, I need to go away for a little bit? Well, um, I haven't told did, him I'm a, that he's a fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, did you notice him like say anything like about the space you're giving him? It, it, not specifically about the space, but you know what he did say to me? You understand me. You get me. Okay. That's exactly what you want to hear. Yes. And did, that was so neat, neat to hear. So neat to hear. Did um, at any point, did you ever read the book, Never Split the Difference? I did. It's actually sitting right in front of me right now. I did. Oh, beautiful. Yes. Yeah, that, that's um, exactly what you want to hear, uh, like with tactical empathy. Like it was helpful. Want to be under yeah. Little slow, okay. but helpful. It was Little hard slow, but, yeah. to read that one, yeah. But it was good. Um, okay, so we're missing a big part of the story here. How okay. do you get engaged to this guy? It was so funny because – as a fearful avoidant, he is so afraid of confrontation. And I'm not just saying bad confrontation, any, even good stuff, right? So he had, uh, he had this big doctor's dinner coming up. And you have to be a fiance or a wife to go to it with him. And he, he asked me to go to the dinner with him. And I'm like, okay, well, how's that going to work? You know, I'm thinking this in my head. And then I, uh, it was a couple of days. He hadn't given me an answer. So I texted him and I'm like, Hey, hon, am I going to this dinner or not? And he forwards me a text response that he had gotten from the, um, the doctor, the place he works for. And it said, yes, you can bring your fiance. And I was like, okay. So the text is calling me his fiance, but he never said that to me. So when I met him that night for, at his house to go to the dinner, uh, I said, so what about that text, honey? And he's like, yeah, I have a ring. I mean, this is exactly how he did this. I have a ring. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and so he went and got the ring and he brings it up to me and he's like, here, you, you can wear this. And I'm like, okay, is it fine? And he's like, yeah, it's yours. <laughs> he was so awkward, so awkward, but it was. It's really, a, it's really nerve wracking to like propose to someone I've luckily only had to do it once, but it was like the most <laughs> nerve wracking experience ever. I knew I was going to get a yes, but it's still just nerve wracking because it's like yeah. the ultimate act of vulnerability. You're asking someone that you want to dedicate your entire life to them, essentially. So it, it kind of yeah. is on brand for a fearful avoidant to it was cute. <laughs> have someone else like kind of do it for them and sort yeah. of like. That was funny. So, and you've only been engaged for nine days now. I mean, this is yes. real fresh. very new. And um, he actually want he he actually since that night said he wanted to do a more formal proposal. So he's planning a vacation. He won't tell me where, but he he doesn't think he's telling me where. But he said Asheville. Oh come on! We both love to kayak. We love to hike, and we love the wineries. What does that say? The Biltmore Estate. Oh, ah, okay. So he's planning a, a vacation for us um, 
it's the engagement yeah, vacation which is it. awesome yeah so he's gonna do a more formal proposal then but yeah that's good what, what a story it I is mean, it I, is isn't it it was yeah it made it made my life easier because usually like i'll get on these success stories and i'll notice like okay this person deviated from the program here, but they still saw success. And usually afterwards, I'm sitting there and trying to understand like, well, why did that work? Well, for you, you just kind of followed the directions and got the result, which is awesome. I did. And I would recommend everyone and anyone that I talk to on the web, um, the page, the group, I tell them, you know, I try to encourage them to, to follow because that's, that's what work. There's a reason for the way things are set up. Right. We and, did not come up with that on our own. Believe me, right. we saw the very first version of the program. It is like changed dramatically from what it used to be because we're learning more about what works and what is working is what, what, what is out there now, you know? Yeah. And it, it definitely does. And I mean, I, I did everything down to the spreadsheets and the, you know, read the things I was supposed to read and um, I love, I love the heart no contact sort of thing. I'm uh, training for a marathon right now. And I kind of have my own version of that where I check uh -huh. off like, okay, I got my run in today. Um, yeah. And the no contact rule is kind of like, you know, if you can like maybe visualize like, hey, there is an end to this thing. It makes it easier to survive. It actually was. It, it Something so simple as that, it really helped. I know. I looked forward to coloring that heart in every morning. And, you know, you don't know the outcome, but as you progress through those hearts, you can see the change in in yourself and in myself and and that was that encouraged me to move forward and yeah i had it easier than a lot of people do probably but um i think the outcome would have been very different had i natted had i begged um i don't see him having come back at all had i done any of that well, it's interesting because a lot of time, w w your statement, you, you think you had it easier than most people. And I would say, no, you didn't. You just, you were extremely disciplined and you didn't make any of the fatal mistakes. Because a lot of the people that have it hard are making these fatal mistakes yeah, in the right, relationship actually. and immediately after the relationship. And yeah. so sometimes I think that the harsh truth that people don't want to accept is that there are things you can do that dramatically you know, make your chances just plummet. And you didn't seem to make any huge mistakes at all. There was only so, one mistake I made. And that was on my second reach out. Um, I had gotten mod approval on a text from Kirsty, And I altered it uh, on my own. And you know what, that this. that's the conversation he backed out of that woman. Knows that was the text. one. But that, that was the one he backed out of. So what does that say? I never did it again. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I did make that one mistake. But yes, I was very disciplined. But you know what? If you love yourself and you um, you realize that you can do deserve better than what's happening to you, you should be able to 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 stick to this. Really, it 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 wasn't it wasn't that hard for me to. Looking back at the whole experience, what do you think made the single biggest difference for you? Improving myself. Okay. Getting a hold of my emotions, getting control of my emotions, uh, my battle buddy. Oh my God, my battle buddy. Phenomenal, phenomenal concept, you guys. Um, actually, she's my best friend now. We, I, we're, I cannot we take together. credit for that together. at all. So, somebody can. I, that was great. Yeah. Well, I'm so, okay. So basically the self-improvement, having the battle buddy helped mm -hmm. a ton as well, probably just to vent and also hear, and maybe was it, was there an element to the battle buddy aspect of like, Hey, I'm not in this alone because someone else is struggling with the emotions just as much as I am. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And, and someone who understands exactly yeah. what you're going through and exactly where you're at. Um, it was it was wonderful and she didn't actually get her ex back she walked away from it so it was a very different um dynamic with her but um we just had each other's backs we were able to vent to each other at any time um so using your battle buddy i would i can't recommend that enough because if you have a desire to break no contact if you have you know or you're feeling low about yourself or whatever that's who you go to you know i and it just was great 
<laughs> it was great. Well, hey, I wanted to say, Amy, thank you so much for doing this. Absolutely. I want, this, I want to help these other people out there too, you know? This was a great success story. It really thank was. You. Thank you.